The theme of today's conference feels very relevant uh, to the two of us because conflict and change are both things that we have been immersed in for the last 11 years working together at 11 Madison Park. And in a way, they are scary words, words you want to shy away from, but they have actually become essential parts of our culture and are truly foundational elements of how we run the restaurants every day. We're going through a transitional time. Um, we are now officially growing as a company. And we want to do that well. We want to now focus on creating an amazing company in the same way that for the last 11 years we focused on creating an amazing restaurant. And that means a lot of things, most of which we don't know. We're doing it for the first time. We're just figuring it out. But one thing we do know is that with all the change our company is going through, there's inevitably conflict, and we're trying to figure out how to deal with those two things as best we can. One thing we know is the importance of articulating the very philosophies that got us to where we are in the first place such that we don't stop embodying them as we grow. We know that we will need to change, but we also want to try as hard as we possibly can to stay the same. Um, and these two themes, change and conflict, are two things that we talk about all the time. We use different language for them, though. We say endless reinvention, and we talk about embracing tension. Those are the two things. They're both very big parts of our culture. I'm going to talk about endless reinvention. He's going to talk about embracing tension. Endless reinvention started uh, pretty quickly, within a year or so, the two of us taking the reins at 11 Madison Park. Uh, it came from a review by a woman named Moira Hodgson in the New York Observer. Frank Bruni from the New York Times was the guy that we were scared of at the time. He was the one we were looking out for. But this review was significant to us because it was our first, and we were craving feedback. It was actually a really good review. We got three and a half out of four stars. But at the end, there was a criticism. She said, I wish the restaurant had a bit more Miles Davis. I remember when the two of us were in our little windowless office in the back of the restaurant, we read that line, and Daniel looks at me and he goes, Will, what does that mean? Uh, that is a good Daniel Hill impression, by the way, just to, just to be clear. <laughs> I had no clue. But it was a gift and it came at the right time because we were craving language to help articulate what we were trying to do and be at the restaurant, and something about that line felt significant. So we decided to really dig into it and try our best to understand the message that she was sending us. We had always been fans of Miles, but circling back to his music, trying to more deeply understand the path of his career, it was fascinating and it was inspiring. So much so that we came up with a list of the 11 words we found most commonly used to describe him and made them our mission statement. On that list were things like fresh, cool, vibrant, forward-moving, collaborative, and endless reinvention. That last one, those two simple words, that <clears throat> phrase, was the best gift we could have ever hoped to receive. See, we were already making a lot of changes. We knew we wanted to be a four-star restaurant, and so we were doing all the things we thought you needed to do in order to become a four-star restaurant. It's actually pretty awesome. We'd get to go to all these restaurants all over the world, the best restaurants in the world, and we would go to see what they were doing, and then we'd come home and we'd do those things too. <laughs> and they worked. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jackets required? Check. Uh, porcelain from Limoges? Check. Uh, big wine list? Double check, we were spending Danny's money at the time. Um, <laughs> but reading this about Miles Davis, it was a realization. See, the two of us, we weren't actually inventing anything. We were just creating the four-star restaurant that we thought people wanted, probably more importantly, the four-star restaurant that already existed. Um, we were not approaching our work in a genuine way. We were just playing copycat. But seeing this phrase, endless reinvention, and looking at how Miles Davis embodied it over the course of his career, it gave us confidence. And we needed confidence. 
because the idea of reinvention requires being open to so much change. You need to be willing to you know, challenge your preconceived notions about your food, your service, your culture, everything. And change is hard. It's not the first time you're hearing it from someone on this stage today. It's frustrating for your staff, it's frustrating for the guests, and it's downright scary for the people initiating it because change is risky, your ideas can fail. But, I don't know, we get excited sometimes, and we were fired <laughs> up and so we got to work. We ditched the dress code, sold the French plates, started investing in our cocktail program, and we truly start started to try to create the four-star restaurant that we would feel comfortable going to. It started with a change in our menu format. At the time, we were so excited about the surprise that came with, with tasting menus, but we also craved the control of a price fix menu. And so we created this experience that offered both in the form of a menu that we lovingly referred to as the grid. Not everyone loved the changes, but for the first time, we really, really believed in the work we were doing. For a moment there, we'd almost felt like we'd arrived. But a funny thing happens with time. People change. We have exceptionally high aspirations for 11 Madison Park. We always want it to be at its best. For us, what that means is it needs to be a genuine expression of the two of us and the other people that run that restaurant with us. And so as we grow up, and as we change, the restaurant has to change with us. That process of invention, it's happened so many times over the last 10 years. And although we stand behind all of them boldly, not all of the changes have been well received. <laughs> I'm gonna have a New York Times here. Uh, this is after the change following the grid menu. We did this 15-course New York tasting menu honoring the traditions and the history of New York. This isn't a review. Pete Wells came in like three days into it, and we were fired up. We're like, yo, this is it. It's on. <laughs> Wells is on. He was on table 60. It wasn't day three. It was the very first service very that first we lunch. reopened. Very first, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was on table 68. I was doing the thing that so many of us do, which is just like creep around the corner and try to stare at him and, and hope that they don't see you. And then he was leaving and he like nodded at me and I was like, ah! <laughs> ah, but we were super stoked. We knew we crushed it. We got everything right. And then this article came out. <laughs> I'm gonna read you a couple of lines here. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, by the end of the four hours, I'd felt as if I'd gone to a Seder hosted by Presbyterians. <laughs> I don't even know that I understand what that means, but I know it's hurtful. Uh, here's a really good one. Uh, this was 11 Madison Park's tribute to Manhattan's Temple of Beef, bright orange mush that you might feed a baby. I actually know exactly what that means, and it is just as hurtful. Um, <laughs> I remember the two of us, the night that that review came out. We're serving it right now, actually. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> yeah, it's Carrot Tartar. I stand by it. You should come and check it out. Um, we were back in that windowless office in the back of our restaurant, despondent, defeated. I mean, listen, you can laugh about that stuff now. Anyone who has ever had a restaurant and gotten a bad review, no matter how much you want to say you don't care about the critics, Reinvention is personal, and there are few things that hurt more. But back to that confidence thing. Even when taken down a peg or two, the thing we learned then is that we couldn't focus on the risk. We needed to try as best we could to live in our hopes instead of in our fears. The process of reinvention continues even today. We're here, it's Monday, this Friday is our last night of service at 11 Madison Park before we close the restaurant for three and a half months for a complete renovation. Um, here we are. We just became the number one restaurant in the world, and now we're completely ripping it apart. <laughs> All right, you got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And now we're ripping it apart to start all over. 
And we are scared. We are genuinely scared. Because we've worked our asses off, things are finally going well. We don't want to mess it up now. We finally have a consistently profitable restaurant. <laughs> things are working more effectively than they ever have, and we are about to put ourselves into debt beyond what I ever imagined in order to rebuild it. That's frightening. But it's also exciting. Because deep down, we both know it's time, and so we choose to trust in that excitement, to live in it and focus on it more than we focus on those fears. Because here's the thing. So long as what we are serving is something that we really believe in, so long as we know that it's authentic, that's all that really matters. We, for us, we need to change in order to stay the same. We change with honesty. We change with vulnerability. We change with transparency. But we change. It's the most scary and the most gratifying part of what we do. It's that that reinvention never stops. It's that it's endless. Yeah, it's scary. Um, I was working last night at service. <laughs> it is scary, I guess. <laughs> it is scary. <laughs> I, was I, I was working service last night, and, and dude, the restaurant felt amazing. <laughs> like, it felt like we don't need to ever change anything. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, bit, it's bittersweet. Um, it's bittersweet. We're excited, but there's five more nights left of the 11 Madison Park, the way we know it and the way we love it. And uh, then we'll close for four months, and it will be new. Um, and hopefully, it will be just as good and even better uh, than when it, than than what it is now. Um, I love this guy so much, but the only thing I don't love is speaking after him. Because <laughs> he's so fucking good at it. <laughs> but here I am. Um, embrace tension. Embrace tension is the other fundamental foundational element that has, has helped us guide us over these past 11 years. And it's an idea that we started to develop, actually, the very first night we met. Though we weren't calling it at that, at that moment. Will and I met back in 2006. I had been at 11 Madison Park for a few months and had quickly realized that if I was going to succeed in evolving 11 Madison Park, a 190-seat brasserie serving steak frites and seafood plateaus into an 80-seat fine dining restaurant, that I needed a true partner in the dining room. And this has eventually led me to dinner with Will. We met at Crispo a restaurant on, four, on West 14th Street. We had a delicious, comforting meal. We learned about each other's passion for Italian food and Barolo, and we started to get to know each other. The best way I can describe that first night was like an awesome blind date. <laughs> first, it was super awkward. But then we got through our first bottle of wine, and it was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, we didn't have a lot in common. I had worked in Chef Three Mishnah Star uh, driven restaurants my entire career. Will has worked at that time in more casual restaurants driven by restaurateurs. He didn't even want to be in fine dining. He was only planning to be at 11 Madison for a year or so to help me get things off the ground. But what we did have in common was our passion for work, our drive to be the best, and to create something really special. That night, we talked about our experiences, about how restaurants run by restaurateurs, it always felt like Every decision was made what was best for the dining room. 
It was focusing so much on hospitality that they were rarely excellent. And how chef-driven restaurants felt like every decision was made what was best for the kitchen. And the focus on excellence was so big, but they often felt that they often felt robotic and cold. We imagined, we dreamed that first night, that run a restaurant by the kitchen and the dining room where decisions were made based on what was best for the restaurant as a whole. Push hospitality and excellence equally. That night, after the second bottle of wine, we decided to work together. We decided to run a restaurant as equal partners. It's kind of incredible to think that that night, 12 years ago, on West 14th Street, we kind of laid out the foundation for our company. That was the easy part. The hard part came when we actually started trying to do it. Because here is the thing. We both always agreed about what we're trying to accomplish at 11 Madison Park. We both wanted the best restaurant it can possibly be. We both always agreed we want to get these four stars by the New York Times. It was easy to, to agree that we wanted three Michelin stars. But we didn't always agree on the way to get there. And in fact, we disagreed all the time. A lot. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> In the beginning, it was hard. Disagreements led to tension and conflict, which of course led to arguments. And remember, at that time, we are in our 20s, and we really liked each other, and we wanted to have fun at the same time. So we were starting to avoid the conversations. We didn't want to fight all the time. But running away from tension, was so bad for our relationship. Things would fester, issues went unresolved. That big breakthrough decision we made at CRISPO that night started to seem like it wasn't going to work after all. It was during a meeting with architect Sir Norman Foster when he was talking about how architects constantly solve problems. And the best architecture is born, born out of limitations. Seeing the passion and excitement in him, one of the greatest architects of all time, finding solutions, he gets so excited to find solutions. It left us inspired. And in fact, a light bulb went off in our heads. The entire journey is about conflict, and the best results come in from embracing that tension. Between Will and I, but even with a larger part of our team, everyone involved in the collaborative process. Tensions is like the waves you need when you're on a surfboard. The waves are very powerful, and when you don't navigate them properly, you can get really hurt. But at the same time, the waves are awesome, and you need them to ride. We recognize that every disagreement was rooted in the fact that we both cared so much about this restaurant. That wasn't something to run away from. That was something to celebrate. We realized that if we could take our emotions out from our interactions, they would stop being arguments, and they would become really constructive conversations. In fact, something you're looking forward to, something you're excited about. We recognize that all the back and forth decisions needed to make were always going to be more complicated than if it would have just been one of us. But it was that common ground 
that we always needed to find and still always need to find that has made us and still making us unstoppable. We're like a married couple. We decided that we would never go to bed angry. <laughs> <laughs> Which sometimes means, and I hate you for that, but sometimes means we need to stay up really, really late. <laughs> <laughs> and we recognize that good relationships take work that ours, to be the best it can be, we can't run away from the challenging conversations. We need to embrace them. Now, it seems more than ever that this is something we need to remember. We're busier than we've ever been, with more important decisions to make each passing week, trying to learn how to delegate more than ever before, and the stakes seem so much higher. Every moment right now, everything, everything is on the line. Everything matters so much right now. As work has gotten busier and more decisions have to be made, there is, of course, more conflict. We're lucky we started as business partners. And over time, we've become very close friends. When we were younger and less busy, the friendship came easier. We could just run out and grab a lunch, or go get some drink, or go, go play a, ping, a, a game of ping pong. Lose to Will in ping pong. Yeah, that's still. <laughs> <laughs> but there isn't so much time anymore. But now we realize that we have to endlessly pursue our professional relationship as well as being best friends. We have to make time for both of these things more than ever. The state of our relationship, and we talk about this all the time, the state of our relationship impacts the restaurants immediately. And in a way, that's a really, really beautiful thing that we have to really, really protect. As Will said, closing and rebuilding 11 Madison Park, it is beyond exciting. It's a dream. We can finally make this restaurant ours. But it is scary because every decision that we make, it matters so, 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 so much. We spent six hour meetings deciding about what letter we're gonna use on the banquets. We have six months long conversations on emails about how the graphic design is gonna be impacted by this renovation. We've been talking about for two years if we're gonna leave the revolving door or not. And <laughs> are, we <laughs> are we keeping it? Yeah, we're keeping it. <laughs> I didn't want to keep it. <laughs> and so we continue to disagree. Just as often as we did in the beginning, perhaps even more. And now we have even less time together to talk things through. So we need to remember to trust in one another's objectives, to keep in mind that the passion is essential and always, always fight to maintain what we between us have built. And this is the right way forward. That realization, the moment we recognized how conflict between us almost always resulted in us doing our best work. So long as we were able to embrace it was one of the most important lessons in our careers. And it's something we remind ourselves every single day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome.